FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, it's Trent from L.A. Hey, Trent. <laughs> Got to take you to task a little bit for the Clooney stuff. What's... I don't know. I... What do you mean? Well, he's right. What do you mean he's right? Well, I mean, would you would you not agree that Hollywood and the Academy have been at the forefront of promoting social change and exposing injustice? I mean, I mean, it's been going on for decades, just like he said. Well, like, give me give me some examples of if you think that was such a, a relevant point. Jeez, uh, I mean, take take two thousand and five. You know, the the most recent batch. You know of nominees you know broke back mountain i mean that's that's taking on and addressing you know homosexual issues you know crash racial stereotyping and you know the the, the fallout that results from that you know and I, I mean going back to i mean the searchers you know racial prejudice again sexism you know uh-huh on the on the waterfront Okay. I mean that totally mirrored the political climate of the of the early fifties, and you know, union corruption, that sort of thing. Schindler's List. And surely you've seen that. Uh, uh huh. Cuckoo's Nest. You know the plight of the of these you know wards of the state, for lack of a better term, and you know them trying to find meaning, you know, in their lives. And I mean that's all that's all on the silver screen. I mean. You know, sure, uh, Hollywood can entertain, but it can also, you know, it's a mirror. You know, I mean, I've, I've, I'm a fan of your show, and I've heard you say that, you know, you're a mirror, and Hollywood's a mirror, but it, it also, you know, it's a tool, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's, movies can be a tool, and, you know, I mean, West Side Story, you know, I mean, that's, that's I know a lot of people say that, look at that as, as fluff, you know, but it's, it's about the, you know, the taboos. Forbidden love, you know, between two, you know, people that think they're that they they shouldn't be together, but they are, you know, through all uh -huh. the all the you know the struggle, you know, Chicano, Chicano and you know and and white, and you mm -hmm. know they 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 make it happen, you know. So basically, you know, to 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 cut to the chase, I, I just wanted to say I think you're wrong, and Hollywood does have a heart, and it does. Try to make a difference, and as far as I'm concerned, it, it does set the pace. And yeah, that's fair enough. I okay. uh, I didn't think about the weight of those issues and yeah. kind of taking them on in their respective times. Yeah. That that's fair. That those are fair points. Okay, and I I wouldn't I I'd be saying it even even if I wasn't a member of the academy myself. So, but uh, great show. I just want to say I'm a. I'm You're a right. Well, thank thank you. You're actually a. You're a member of the Academy, like the Motion Picture Arts and Sciences? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So you get to vote on all the awards? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a, uh, I'm a writer, producer, director, you know. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> but no, that's, was, I mean, that's, that's not even why I was calling. So. And what was your anyway, first I, name? Pardon me? What's your name? Uh, Trent L. Strauss. Huh. Yeah. Um... I don't. Would I? Would I guess if you you said writer, director, producer? Yeah. Like what kind of stuff have you done that that you know, like I would have seen or well, uh, yeah, people I, listening would have seen? Ooh, well, I mean, I mean, if, if they've gone to the the theater in the last whatever fifteen twenty years, I'm sure they've seen it. Or if they rented, it, it, you know, if they if they frequent their video rental place, you know, I'm sure uh -huh. I'm sure you, you, you've seen some of it. Uh, what have I? What have I done? Yeah, like what? What kind of things have you done? Like what? Well, you know, uh, geez, in like a writer, producer, director capacity, uh, stuff you've probably seen: uh, Face Peelers one through four and six, and Trails to the Gouging, uh, Doctor Sleaze, Nurse Sleaze, The Hacksawist. Uh, you're soaking in her blood puddles. The Ooze three, Coach Fanel's Revenge, uh, Splattered Dreams, The Kidney Thieves. Raining membranes. Uh, what else? Um, art school arsonist. It eats. Pukadelphia. Cub Scout serial killer. Boy Scout serial killer. We blow serial killer. Girl Scout serial killer. Uh, gut bomb. Two thousand and three. Stuff like that. 
Wow. That, so, but you were in the Academy. Yeah. But those are like slasher films. Please don't. <laughs> don't, okay? I mean, I always thought guys like who made movies like that didn't have a, a chance in hell in getting in the Academy. We, do, we don't like to use the term slasher film or exploitation film or gore. Uh -huh. Okay, well, so just, just let's sideline that. We like to call this, you know, our, our genre is extreme cinema. Extreme cinema. Yeah. So that kind of encapsulates the movies like that that you just named. Well, yeah, and, you know, and, you know, it's, uh, I mean, see, I can already sense in your voice that, that you think, you know, like, you think it's, you think ill of it or you're, you're, it's beneath you and, and, and your thing. Uh-huh. Well, which, which I, it's, you know, it's not, it's not. I mean, personally? Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you want me to be completely, I, I, like, I, 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 yes. I look, first of all, I appreciate you talking honestly with, you know, with me and kind of addressing the fact that your movies may not be as critically respected or, right. or you know, looked at as, as uh, highly as other movies. I mean, I personally, if I'm being completely honest here, movies like that, um, just kind of, I, I look at those as maybe being, when they're really exploitative, I look at them as being part of the problem a little bit. Like, they really just are meant just to be gruesome and and gross and I, I honestly don't know what they uh what they do other than give people you know nightmares see that's what that's what I, i've been up against you know for 15 years or so i mean from my standpoint i'm i'm doing the same thing as as you know the guys that directed those those great films i i mentioned earlier you know like like what movies you know spielberg schindler's list uh, Kazan on the waterfront, you know, Ford with the searchers, that sort of thing. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm like, take Doctor Sleeves. Uh huh. Doctor Sleeves is black. So. Well, I would like to think that we broke the color barrier on, on that one. You know, I, I don't think until Doctor Sleeves there had ever been a uh, a black sadistic doctor serial killer in a movie. So he just. He's like a crazy doctor. He's insane, yeah. And so is Nurse Lee's. Which you also named as one of your movies. Yeah. That's like a spin-off? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. So just because you have a, 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 a person of color, like, killing people, that makes him somehow, um, like, that's like breaking down racial barriers? Well, it's beyond that. I mean, take take the hacksawist. The hacksawist was gay. Leon. Yep. Lee, well, what, what in the movie? I didn't see the hacksaw. The hacksawist? Yeah, you didn't see it? I didn't see the hacksawist. Okay. Well, what, what made him kill? Like, what was his... Did it well, he was, he, he was, he's a, a, a street hustler, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, you know, just kind of getting, uh, you know, getting ripped off a lot. And that sort of thing, and he's got these sort of visions of, of you know, his, his uh, awful mother haunting him, you know. Uh -huh. He's out on the street in his little tight satin shorts, and, and uh, geez, you know, that'll drive anyone to saw people people's legs off in their faces. Well, that, that first of all, that sounds a little offensive. You have a, a gay character who's... Uh... It's empowering. But you're saying he's in tight satin shorts. Well, that's how they dress out there. <laughs> Who's they? You know, the the lady boys on the streets. Okay, so, so yeah, so you're really... Okay. Let's, uh, let, let's go beyond the hack sauce, okay? Okay. Girl Scout serial killer. Kimmy is a girl. Who's Kimmy? She's the, uh, the lead character in, in that. She, uh having a real problem with her uh, scoutmaster, Sharon. Uh -huh. And it kind of touches off this thing where she just goes on like this spree. She goes on a spree? Yeah, it kind of makes uh, I Spit on Your Grave look like Amelie. Oh, I definitely would want nothing to do with that movie. No offense. Well, my films have been called the bravest in, in Hollywood. Like, take it. 
uh, entrails to the gouging. Uh-huh. That film holds the record for the most blood ever in one scene. And how how much blood was that? Thirty two thousand gallons. Thirty two thousand gallons. Yeah. And what were you using as the blood? Like that caro syrup? Exactly. People, yeah. Yeah. People always talk about. But yeah. how, where did you get 30, 32,000 gallons? What is that? that must... uh, it was about a third of the budget. But where do you even store 32,000 gallons? A truck. And, but, okay, a truck. So you had a truck full of... Yeah, and then we hook it up in, into this big kind of pump. I don't want to ruin the, the, you know, the, the, ma- the, the Hollywood magic of it for any of your listeners. Or well, for you, because you'll see it someday. Uh-huh. You know, oh, oh, but, that's... but there's like a big pump, and it just like it's like shoots out of this like basically a water cannon. And it's it's coming from one person. Uh, no, there are about forty two people, and they're kind of on like this large skewer. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, and then that's there's disgusting. yeah, and they're all sort of getting at the, at the same time. It's, it, it's magic. You got to see it. Uh, how I it was really... banned in Europe. It was banned in Europe. Yeah, a lot of wow. flicks have been banned in Europe. And that's Europe, which is yeah. pretty uh, yeah. liberal with a lot of stuff. So, yeah. All of I Europe? I thought so. All of Europe? Uh, Belgium has been pretty good. Okay. But that's a, that's about it. Wow. Well, i I got to tell you, I have no interest in seeing... Uh, well, really? Wait till you hear about this. What's that? Well, it's my latest film. I, I just wrapped. Uh-huh. It's going to be My Citizen Kane. Really? Yeah. Now, is it in the same vein as these other movies? It is sort of, but it's, I mean, it's like nothing uh, nothing you've ever seen from the extreme cinema genre. Uh-huh. It, I mean, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to wow everybody. It's, it's, um, it's called The Tool Belt Killer. The Tool Belt Killer. Yeah. yeah. And what is the... Well, what makes it different to begin with is that this baby's, uh, it was shot on 35. 35 millimeter. Yeah. So the other ones weren't? Well, most of them were on 16. Some were on 8 and Super 8. Uh-huh. Some okay. Some on, on, on video. Okay. So this one you did you did full on, though. We did it full on. I mean, this is going to... I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to garner awards. I mean, I'm not going to go out and say it right now. Awards are... I will be reaping them. I mean, this is like... This is... In a nutshell, it's like Phantom of the Opera meets Norma Ray, but with way more impalings and beheadings. Okay. So, wait, Nor- i got to wrap my head around that for a second. Yeah. Norma Ray yeah. meets what? Phantom of the Opera. So Norma Ray meets Phantom of the Opera with yeah. beheadings. Yeah. Now, what is the plot, if you don't mind, of... Well... I mean, I don't want to give a lot away. Okay? Sure, no, I understand that completely since okay. the movie's not out yet. Okay. Basically, it, it's the story of a young man, Brian, and he lives in a really poor town. Okay. And he he's shunned by all his you know all his classmates. He's 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 it, it takes place at the end of his senior year. You know, he and he's, he's out of school. Okay, mm-hmm. and. They shot him just because he's different, you know, and so he gets out, and he's working that summer at Lowe's, you know, the, you know what Lowe's is? Sure, it's a, like a Home Depot type uh, home center. Exactly. So he, he's, basically, he's stationed in the uh, the lumber department. Uh-huh. And, you know, so he's trying to do his job, you know, like a good guy, and he gets kind of taunted by all these kind of burly contractors, you know, who come in to buy their lumber and their bricks and their whatever, their masonry supplies, that sort of thing. Just because he's it's because he's different. Uh huh. How how is well, his name was Brian? Yeah. How is Brian different? Well he's rich. Okay. His his is the only rich family in this town. Uh huh. And his dad actually owns most of the businesses in the town. Uh huh. And the dad got rich when he invented this new kind of, uh, like a corrosive agent that strips paint off of metal. Okay, I'm I'm kind of missing how this makes him, how how he's being ostracized. Oh well, 
a lot of the people in the town hate Brian and his family, you know, Basically, one of the big reasons is the fact that 75% of the kids in town are addicted to huffing paint be gone. Uh-huh. And also, Brian's dad has kind of run out most of the small business owners in town. Uh-huh. And he's also a philanderer. Okay. And he's also the mayor. So he kind of runs everything. So, uh, but again, okay, I, I I appreciate all those details, but how does how does that make him like uh, like uh, because he's rich in a yeah. town full of poor people? Everyone he's else somehow... is poor, so they kind of shun him. But he's rich. Well, that doesn't exactly. That's a little weird. Well, that's how it was for me growing up. So you grew up in a town full of poor people. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people can identify with that. And you were like the rich. Yeah. So you, well, I don't, I, this is not about me. It's about, it's about the story. It's about the craft. Okay, okay so all right. Let's get it. This is all about the movie. What was it called? Tool Belt Killer? The Tool Belt Killer. Okay. Right. Okay, so Brian's dad, he wants Brian to work at the Lowe's mm -hmm. this summer so he'll know what it's like to have a manual job, a manual labor, before he goes to college. Okay. Yeah. So one day Brian's driving the forklift. And he's getting this big pallet of cement bags off this big shelf, you know, with one uh -huh. of those big, you know, forklift things. And this one jerky, fat con uh, contractor, uh huh, he's the one that's really pressing his buttons and the orders for him. So somehow one of the tongs on the forklift starts to give way. With all the... All the stuff on it. Yeah. And the pallet comes crashing down onto the forklift, and there's this huge cloud, like this plume of dust everywhere. Sure. You can't see anything. And then right then, lightning strikes the very spot where that, ha that, that happens. Like, lightning goes through the roof of the lows. And, like, Brian's killed, right? He's, he's dead. Wait, wait. He f there's an, a, an accident with these bags of cement. Yeah. And he gets buried underneath them, like it collapses we, on him. We think so, yeah. And then, and then you said something about lightning. Isn't that weird? It's like supernatural. So the pile, the thing gets hit by lightning. Yeah. Okay. It's I'm, all purpley, like when the lightning hits, and it's like purple and like oh, it, it looks great. It looks okay. Great. But so he's killed, right? Uh huh. Or is he? Well, I'm going to assume no, he's not. The body wasn't ever found. And this is where the story really takes off. Uh -huh. Okay, so he's horribly disfigured, but, but alive. And, and what happened is he, he slinks off while all the dust is happening, you know, and everything, everyone's going wild. He uh -huh. goes into the bathroom, and he takes his first look into the mirror like, and sees what he looks like. Sure. And it's shocking. Uh -huh. I'm not going to give away what he looks like, but he's, he's mucho disfigured. Because of this accident that yeah. he got caught up in. I mean, how would you look if a pallet of, you know, like a thousand pounds of cement bags yeah. landed on you? Sure. But you he's know? so he's but he's lucky and he got hit by lightning. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So he's shocked. I mean it's like mm -hmm. life is over. Yeah. I should so, say I should say we are joined by uh you know it was Trent Trent L. Strauss, yes. Okay, a filmmaker who's kinda of giving us some insight into his new movie. So thanks for that. Oh. So, so I, we, I mean, I, I didn't intend for it, for it to be this this involved, but I mean, well, no, this is I'm, this is very interesting. I'm, I'm, I appreciate you. Oh, talking. of course, of course. I hope um, everyone comes to see uh, the, the the tool belt killer when it's really so. So anyway, he's just mortified what he looks like, and he knows his life is over as he knows it. So uh -huh. he li he lives in the walls of the lows. This guy, Brian. Yes. And does he become the tool belt killer? Well, eventually he, you know, of course he, he survives on coffee and toast cheese. For like, which is food that's around the, the in lows. The in the vending machines, yeah. Sure. Okay, so here's what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, Belty, that's, that's what Brian becomes. He, okay. When the store's closed, uh -huh. he, he, he. He fashions himself this new outfit. Yeah. He, he's so disfigured that he makes himself a mask out of duct tape and sandpaper 
and then also like a suit out of fiberglass insulation. Uh huh. It looks incredible. It's so creepy. And the coolest part of his whole new thing, this insane tool belt that he makes. Yeah, what's on the what's the tool belt? Well, it's about? full of these modified screwdrivers, hammers, hatchets, pliers, little saws from around the store, and he's modified them so now they're these horrific implements of death and torture. Uh huh. And he also grinds his fingers into keys with the key maker. <laughs> oh God! It's such a sick scene. Oh, There's like marrow spurting. Oh, great! Oh, that's so disgusting. Oh my God! It's great. So basically, Belty he he takes revenge on everybody he hates and also their families. You know, just just killing everyone and grinding up everything and wood chippers and it, it's uh-huh. great. Basically, he 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 lures all the all the families and all the people that he hates to Lowe's with these these fake coupons he's printed up. Uh huh. What what do you mean like a fake coupon? Well, it's these coupons that he's made, and they tell the person you know who they're who they're mailed to to come around the back entrance of Lowe's at closing time for a, a, a free patio set and they all fall for it and they all get you know sliced and diced so I'm sorry this is just nuts I, I'm just like this sounds it's like a great story don't you think <laughs> yeah I, great might not be the first word I would uh, would come to mind but so he sends us these coupons that trick families yep. into thinking they're going to They get... look really pro. Like he's Photoshopped them. There's like a Photoshop thing in Lowe's in the, like the office. I mean, he's got free run of the place after, after it closes. Yeah. So he pretty much is luring these families to the thing, and then he just uh, t- uh, uh, like attacks the families? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, but there, uh, uh, I forgot something that's... Super crucial to this. It's very interesting. Uh-huh. Um, early in the movie, it's also revealed that, that that the Lowe's was built upon this ancient Viking burial ground. A Viking burial ground. Yeah, and he actually find Brian Belty finds one of those horn hats, and that becomes part of the outfit too. And this will play into the story later. Well, wh- where where does he find a horn hat? Uh, just um, in the walls. How would it get into the walls? Though? I don't know. I mean, it's it's been there forever. I guess when they were building the thing, and it kind of jostled stuff, and the horn hat got wedged up in the walls when they were doing sheetrock or something. So, so totally plausible. Somehow you're expecting. Uh, it, so it jostles the horns up. The horn hat, yes. Out of the it, ground. It, it's a horn hat. Yeah. No, I'm aware. It's a horn hat. It jostles it up out of this burial ground, somehow up into the walls of a current construction. I've heard of it happening. We had a guy doing research, and he said it's plausible. Okay, so so he is he wearing the horn hat? Oh yeah, over the sandpaper and the and the, the tape. It's great. So is he like possessed by the Vikings? Oh God, no! Come on, that comes a little later. Okay. So basically, I I, I don't want to ruin too much of this, but I, I can't not tell the, tell what I I know because I'm so excited about it. So is this the whole movie? No, there's so much more. So okay. this is just you setting up the premise for the well, movie. Well, yeah, I'm jumping around. I'm, I'm giving away a little bit, but I, I, I mean, I, I've been working on this thing for a year, so I'm just so uh-huh. excited about it. And th- there's this big showdown at the end. So what is the movie? What is the movie about? The the bulk of the movie is him attacking well, a family or something. Well, the, the, it's so much. The, there's this touching love story that also comes comes into play. Okay. Uh huh. Okay, so Belty. I, I mean Brian. You keep calling him Belty. Oh, Belty! You know that's like you know in the Chainsaw Massacre. You know, uh-huh. you know you, you you have nicknames. You know, like, uh-huh. like, like Freddy and etc. So it's like he's Belty, okay. and Belty's going to be huge too. But I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So there's this touching love story when when Brian was in high school, he had this crush on this girl Monica, mm-hmm. but she wouldn't talk to him. Okay, just because he was from across the tracks. You know, he lived in a mansion across the tracks and. You know, she felt weird also because her mom and dad worked in Brian's mansion and as you know, as maid and groundskeeper. So she felt weird about that, you know, and Brian's dad treated her parents horribly, you know, on the job. Uh-huh. Well, you know, he'd make them 
watch him make love to these filthy Ugh. prostitutes. Ugh, I mean, it's a great scene. It, I mean, it's sort of a, it's sort of funny it, the way we shot it. But well, that, anyway, that doesn't sound funny. Well, it, it is. You guys see it anyway. So. At one point in the movie, Monica comes into Lowe's just as it's closing, mm-hmm. and, and she needs these light bulbs. Okay. And Belty is kind of he sees this, and there's hardly anyone at the store, so there's no one around to see it really. Uh huh. So he summons up the courage to talk to her, and amazingly, she's not turned off by his looks. She actually actually likes him. Really. And she doesn't know it's Brian though. That's the thing. This guy that she shunned in high school. And as time goes on, there's this beautiful montage where things escalate, and you know she, she comes to visit Belty after hours, and they they make love several times, and they're, every time is depicted in the film quite graphically, oh. in a nice way, in a nice way. And but then one night, Monica comes in, and she tells Belty that her dad got this great new job uh-huh. in Western Maine, and the whole family's moving in a week, a week. Okay. So he's devastated. So what does he do? Uh huh. He lures her family, minus Monica, to Lowe's with this special coupon that he mails to their house. Basically, a, a patio set for mom, dad, and little brother. Uh huh. And guess what happens to them? Uh, probably what I thought happened to them the second you mentioned this idea, which is it's just them getting a- attacked. Well, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, really attacked. So anyway, later that night, uh-huh. Bel- Belty sits down with Monica. She yeah. has no idea what's happened. Yeah, okay. for this, you know, you know, for their their traditional breakfast because it's at, it's at like six a.m. You know, so you know, it all it all happens during the closing hours uh-huh. before it opens. So it's like six a.m. and everything's going great until Monica takes this bite of, of her omelet. Uh huh. And she she suspects something's wrong. And then you know she she sees her her father's face. You mean like the like the ghost of the father, like no. like 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 hallucinating? No, his face is in the omelet. Belty cut it off with a hacksaw. <laughs> oh God! He got revenge on the whole family. Well, well, what? They were trying to take away the one thing he loved. Yeah, well, maybe Belty could leave the Lowe's. How could they do that to Belty? What? You keep calling him Belty like he's the hero. He is the hero. <laughs> How? No, 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 no. See, this is the problem I have with these horror movies. Ugh. You have this... Fa- what? So the family is the villains? Of course they are, because they tried to take away the one thing that he loves, and they're so boring and poor. So they're born. So, so pretty much, you're saying the family is guilty. They are guilty. So is everyone else who who picked on him just because he was rich. No one picks on rich people first. Well, oh, they of all. certainly do. Ask. Uh, I speak from experience. Anyway, you should see that, that Monica realizes at that point what's happened, and she's got to kill Belty or become his belt bride. Uh huh. And there's this long fight scene that ends up carrying over into every department in the store: lighting fixtures, plumbing, sheetrock, lawn care. It's insane. So this is just this huge fight that goes on between yeah. Belty, because the family is dead now. Exactly. And the most gruesome scene happens in the, in the kitchen section. Uh huh. Belty's trying to gouge Monica in the eye with one of his screwdrivers. Yeah. But she gets loose and puts Belty's arm into the garbage disposal. And yeah. he's caught. And he's really caught. And then she summons all of her all of her strength and all of her anger. It's so empowering. And she manages to put his entire body into it and hits puree and he gets pureed. Uh huh. So that's the end of Belty. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> How is that not the end of Belty? Well, just you got just... me calling him Belty. Now. You see, so, yeah, uh, you love him. So that's the end. America of America this... will fall in love with Belty. That's the end of this sick, uh, this sick serial killer. Hell no, it's not. 
You know why? Why? Because just as he's about to take his last breath of air, uh huh. Belty calls on the Viking spirits. Yeah. And they help him. And ha what happens then? Well, then he gets all this Viking strength. Uh huh. And he chases Monica throughout the store with one of those old lawn mowers. You know, the ones that they're not even like motorized. They have the blades that you can see going round and round. Like the old-fashioned push mowers. Exactly. Yeah. You see, like old dumb people using them. Yeah, the old lawn. dumb people or poor people. Oh, poor people especially. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I guess to you, that's all the same though. Oh, oh, come on! You're putting words in my mouth. So she's is it, running away. Is, and it, she falls. is it though? Is it? Pardon me. Are they the same? Old pe uh, what? Dumb people and poor people? Yeah. I didn't say that. Well, I'm asking you a question. In your mind, are they? Uh, I no. I mean, uh, old uh, dumb people and poor people buy my movies too. Oh, so you like them for that? I love them for that. Uh huh. You would too if you were me. So anyway, Monica falls. Uh huh. And he's got her cornered in the saw department. Yeah. And there's this huge, oversized chainsaw on display, like kind of like, you know, one of those display things, but it's like massive. Sure. But it works. Yeah. I, I don't want to ruin. Like the how movie. big? It it's like five feet long. Okay. It's huge. So, I don't want to ruin it, but let's just say I outdid entrails to the gouging on this one. So Belty now kills the woman he loved. He's got to. She, I mean, she was trying to kill him. It's yeah, because... So, it's so be, graphic. Because, I might get kicked out of the Academy again for this one. <laughs> because... Wait, again? Yeah. How, when did you get kicked out the first time? Uh, well, it was in 2002. And what happened with that? Well, they said I went too far with uh, your soaking in her. Ugh. And what, how, what was... I didn't even want to know. Well, it's this movie. It's about a guy who runs this new age therapy kind of retreat place sort of thing, you know? Uh-huh. And, you know, you go there to take these mineral baths and stuff. Uh-huh. Only he's this brutal, this brutal serial torture oh, there, killer, yeah, killer guy. And oh, basically, there, there, he, he, a combines, he combines the mineral water with the liquefied bodies of his victims in the oh, bath. God. And then hot chicks kind of soak it. Ugh, it. That's so disgusting. They said it was over the top. And, uh -huh. Yeah, I'm sure they were. I'm sure they were wrong in your mind. Didn't even play in Belgium. Even Belgium wouldn't yeah, touch they, the movie. They passed. <laughs> wow. You were gonna love the tagline for this this flick, though. For tool belt killer. Yeah, yeah. You know how Lowe's ha has their has their you know their 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 thing, their slogan. You know. Uh huh. What is it? Let us help you. Uh huh. The tagline that's gonna be on the poster for this. The tool belt killer. Yeah. Let him help you die. Let him help you die. Yep. Okay. Well, it's... that's typically terrible. How did you get... Hey, that's Hollywood, man. Come on. How did you get permission to uh, to film at a Lowe's? We didn't actually film at a Lowe's. Uh-huh. It, it, it was on a soundstage in uh, Iowa. Okay, and they're cool. Lowe's was cool with the logo and everything. You do you use the Lowe's logo. Uh, that's sort of a bone of contention right now. We were actually, you know, we're having a hard time with that right now, and we also want to do this tie-in with Lowe's too, but they're being pretty reluctant. Yeah, I could imagine maybe Lowe's might not love uh, the <laughs> the premise that if you go to use one of their coupons, you might get murdered. Well. Yeah, they're being kind of, kind of hard assed about it. So, yeah, I wonder why. I don't know. We're hoping we you get some going you... Hardee's, maybe you know, like a Belty Burger or something. What's that? A Belty Burger from Hardee's, maybe we could. Hopefully, we're, we could get that rolling. So, you, who would want to eat though after like a? See, this is the problem I have. Is that I even I, I like horror movies. You hate Hollywood, is what no, it is. No, no, I don't hate Hollywood. It's Hollywood, you know. But it just seems like all the movies now are not even horror movies. They're like torture movies. Well, no. It's not. See, you, you, your problem is you can't look beyond 
the, the graphic stuff that you're seeing and realize that it is, like I said earlier, Hollywood holding the mirror up to the audience. Well, well, if the it, internal struggle of please, the viewer okay, on the screen. Please tell me how this is uh, is is representative of that. Haven't you ever? Geez, I don't know. Have Have you ever been annoyed with a boss or an employer or something or? Uh huh. Uh-huh. You know, and and it 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 sends you into this rage inside, right? You know, you're just you want to let it out somehow. Uh-huh. You come to see one of my flicks. Mm-hmm. And it's coming out on the screen just the way you envision it. And don't say it's not. I mean, don't say that you haven't wanted to hacksaw off the limbs of of your boss. No, well, no, I haven't. Or your dad. I uh, know. Again, I or haven't. Those kids from school that picked on you because you were rich. I have no idea. You just are really. You're you're way off base on this one. I have never. I've never wanted to do that. Well. You, See, you're so anti Hollywood, and I guess it's just not Hollywood's just not your thing. Uh huh. Well, how long have you been out in Hollywood? I was out there for about ten years. And where are you now? I'm in Newbridge, New Jersey. You're in you. You're in Newbridge now. Yeah. How long have you been in Newbridge? About two months. You've been back for two months. Yeah. No, I, I moved here. Oh, you didn't grow up in Newbridge. No. So you live in Newbridge now. Yeah, yeah. Why? Why do you live in Newbridge? What made you pick I actually Newbridge? I grew up in, in uh, Westbridge. Oh, you grew up in Westbridge. Yeah, well, that's fancy. Yeah. See. Uh huh. You and Daddy. Dad, Daddy had me bust to the poor section of town, so I would build my character. Uh huh. And they all made fun of me. You're really a little twisted, aren't you? I'm not twisted at all. I mean, these movies are just really. Far out there. You know what's even further out there? What? My next film. And what, this. what is that? I actually want to run it by you. Uh-huh. It's called Hang the DJ. Hang the DJ. You know that Smith song? Yeah, yeah, I do. It's, Pan- uh, it's kind of inspired by that. Uh-huh. But, you know, it's uh, it's about this, uh, this DJ who's getting stalked by this maniac guy whose father was killed by a DJ back in the, in the 80s. Uh-huh. This, this DJ threw a record out into the crowd at this dance as like a surprise. Uh huh. And it hit the kid's dad right after the kid was born. Uh huh. Hit the kid's dad right in the juggler vein. Right in the what? In the juggler vein. <laughs> the ju- the jugular vein. Juggler vein. What? Spell what, it. Stutter. Spell it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you didn't stutter. Unfortunately for you, if you would have stuttered, you might have said the word the right way. What, vein? No, say the word before vein. Juggler vein. Spell it. Like the juggler, J-U-G-G-L-E-R. No, well, it's jugular. No, it's not. What? <laughs> it, 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 you it, spell it. J-U-G-U-L-A-R. You're off your rocker. So anyway, the the dad bleeds to death right on, on, on the dance floor. Yeah. So the son goes nuts. You know, and his, his his whole mission in life is to murder all the world's DJs. All the DJs in the world. Yeah, and I was wondering if you'd uh, you'd want to star in it. Um, who would I play? You'd play yourself. Um, maybe no. I don't. No, re- re- do it. I really don't feel like being a part of these movies. You've, you've got to do it. You know why? Why? Because it's a documentary. You're already starring in it. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Uh, you'll find out soon enough. <laughs> yeah, you'll find out soon enough. Oh, I, I hate... Hang the DJ. You know what I hate? The fact that you're just glorifying the worst kind of... Uh, just the worst kind of stuff. Like, you've got this guy... Why is the father in Tool Belt Killers not the hero? Because he's trying to take away the one thing that no. he loves. No, okay, yeah, well, you know what, maybe... Just like th- all DJs try to take away the one thing that everyone else loves. And what's that? Music. Oh, so you want me to... Talking. Pl- you want me to talking. play... You want more music? Yeah. So that's why you have all the DJs getting killed in this movie. Well, 
at least one of them. Why? Why would you be mad at me? You'll find out soon enough. Oh, I, I don't. I kind of don't Hang know. Hang the DJ. Hang the DJ. <laughs> wow, that turned into a whole interview. Wasn't kind of wasn't expecting that. A little bit of uh, tool belt killer. <laughs>